Hello, my name is David Peggy and I work here in the Scientific Department at the National Gallery, London. I'm an analytical chemist and investigate the materials used in these remarkable paintings around us. I investigate materials such as the varnishes, the paint binders and some of the pigments. My name is Gabriella McCarr and I also work here at the National Gallery in London in the Scientific Department. I examine the layer structure of paintings and I also identify and analyse pigments. Researching the materials of the paintings and the techniques of the artists helps the conservators with the care and the treatment of the collection. It also helps the curators to build up a knowledge of the different artists' painting practices. This is a 15th century German portrait of Alexander Murnau and he's identified by the letter that he's holding. We don't actually know the artist that painted this picture over 500 years ago and that's why he's been named the Master of the Murnau Portrait. When the painting was first acquired by the gallery in the early 1990s, it looked very different to how it looks now. The background was painted blue and the tall hat was much smaller and fitted close to the man's head. But how did we know that this painting had once looked very different? And why were we so confident that it wasn't simply the artist changing his mind about the colour of the background at a later stage? The answer lies in the careful examination of the painting and the chemical investigation of the materials, which along with art historical research, enabled the conservator to carefully transform this painting to its present state. This is a particularly striking example, but the techniques that you'll hear about are used every day to investigate the paintings here at the National Gallery. The first thing we need to do is look very closely at the painting. We can inspect the surface of the paint with a low magnification microscope that shows us things in the surface texture, such as age cracks in the paint. When conservators and scientists were looking at the portrait for the first time close up, they noticed that the blue paint in the background was not consistent with a 500-year-old paint. We have to remember that paintings are not two-dimensional images, like we see in books. They are three-dimensional objects made up of several layers. Often, paintings are on canvas, but at this date, they are usually on a wood panel. On the top of the wood, or canvas support, there is usually a preparation layer applied across the whole area to give a uniform surface to then paint on. We call this the ground layer. Then there are the paint layers. Most old paintings will also have a varnish on top of the paint which helps to protect the picture and saturate the colours to make them more vibrant. Having seen that there was something not quite right, we needed to look at the layer structure of the painting and see what might be below the blue painted background. We can do this by taking minute samples of paint from the picture. To get an idea of the scale of a sample taken, they're usually smaller than a grain of table salt. Once we have our paint sample, we can take it to the scientific department to prepare it for analysis. Once prepared in a resin block, we can look at it down the microscope. We can magnify it from 50 to 1,000 times the actual size. This cross-section shows the blue paint we can see on the surface of the portrait, and underneath it's clear that there's a different paint, which is a brown colour made up of a mixture of yellow, red, black and white. We can see from this that the background at some stage was actually brown. But how do we know that the artist himself didn't just change his mind and repaint it blue? This image here shows a cross-section from the blue background just above the man's hat. Here you can see a different layer structure from the painting. You can see the same upper blue paint layer as before, but there's also a different paint layer below, which is the hat. We can see from this that the hat appeared purple originally, although it now looks much darker. This is because the paint layer is made of a mixture of pigments, a crimson red and a blue. The two blue pigments look very different. The original blue of the hat has larger angular particles, which indicates that it could be azurite. The top blue layer has much smaller particles. There are two options for the type of blue. A chemical test showed it to be Prussian blue, which was a pigment not in use in paintings until the 1720s. This is over 300 years after the portrait was painted. Therefore, it must have been added to the painting after the original artist's death. So having discovered that the blue background had actually been painted at a much later stage, it was decided that the colour and composition of the original should be restored. Conservators here at the National Gallery were able to carefully remove the blue paint, revealing the original brown background and a taller hat. But the question still remains as to why someone in the 18th century changed the colour of the background and the shape of the hat. The answer to this lies in another room in the gallery. Hans Holbein the Younger is a very famous artist who was painting in the early 16th century. 
He painted some of the most famous kings and queens, including Henry VIII. This painting of Christina of Denmark by Holbein clearly shows his use of a blue background. The difference between Holbein's background on this painting and the blue background on the Mourner portrait is that this painting uses the historic pigment azurite. In the 18th century, when the Mornau portrait was radically altered, Holbein would have been a very popular painter amongst art collectors. It's therefore believed that the 15th century portrait was changed to look more like a portrait by Holbein. This would have made it a far more valuable work of art. I enjoy using my chemistry knowledge to investigate the materials of the paintings as it supports conservation treatments and enhances our understanding of the collection. It's really great to work in such an interdisciplinary job where I can use my knowledge of chemistry and scientific techniques together with my training in history of art and paintings conservation.